So I thought I'd do a little quick video on the munitions that are being used currently in the war uh, between Russia and the Ukraine. Um, and in particular talk about thermobaric weapons, because we've heard a lot about them. They're called aerosol bombs, vacuum bombs. Um, I said that they were internationally banned. Apparently that's incorrect. The US has used them in Afghanistan um, and in, they used them in Vietnam. And it seems they're internationally condemned, <laughs> probably by the US, <laughs> but they are uh, not illegal. So I was incorrect in saying that. That was a, a false report I'd read. But they're frowned upon. And I'll go into details why. But, you know, what about these things? Are they being used? Um, I believe they are being used currently. I know that my mate Chris doesn't think they are. But um, I believe they've, they've ramped up now to level three in their sort of um, military doctrine, their bo body of doctrine, bo you know, body of dogma, whatever you want to call it, that the Russians have. They've gone from spend sending in the special small squads of troops just hoping to quickly uh, overtake the country and take out the government and stuff. Didn't work. They've gone into the second of sending in massed armies using conventional army tactics of targeting the army. They're definitely on level three now, which consists of pulverizing everything in sight with everything you've got. They're, I mean, and we know this, this is not a myth, this is not Western propaganda, because um, what we're seeing from the Russians, clearly, they're not using targeted spotted artillery that basically lands on a sixpence piece. They're not doing that. They're using tons of these multiple rocket launcher systems. Um, and those are, have always been inaccurate, and even to this day they're inaccurate. Uh, you know, the things that we used to call Stalin organs back in World War II, they're using a lot of these. Now, these things can be, can, can be tipped with conventional explosives. They can be tipped with uh, um, electromagnetic pulses to take out electrical things. They can be tipped with thermobaric weapons. Some of the systems can even have tactical nukes. Um, and they're certainly using these multiple rocket launcher systems, MLRS. Um, do I think they've now got onto this level three where more than just sort of uh, targeting troops, they're targeting civilians? I, I think the fact they're using these multiple rocket launchers says that, that they are, and all the destruction we're seeing of the cities. I mean, I've seen so many videos now where places have been hit and places have been destroyed where there was no evidence of destroyed Ukrainian military equipment. It's like the school we saw, sorry, not the school, the maternity hospital um, in Mariupol, Clearly, it wasn't like there were burnt out Ukrainian tanks or other weapon systems there. No, it, it was just a maternity hospital. Um, if, they were if they were just targeting military, you would see the burnt out buildings and you'd also see destroyed Ukrainian hardware there. And I've not seen any of that. And it's not that we're just getting fed what the West wants us to see, because there's just so much social media. I mean, I'm amazed, really, that even on the battle line, you can now sort of upload things. You see, I guess their mobile phone network's still working for the most part. And um, certainly their internet lines are all working. It's somewhat remarkable. Uh, you know, I've not known this in a modern conflict, where we're literally getting all of these cammed videos of these things going off. And it's, it's amazing. But anyway, as for the thermobaric weapons, how, how to, what are these? How are they different? Um, in a way, it's a return to old-fashioned warfare. You know, back in the Siege of Malta, for example, the Knights of St. John of 1565, they would use these things called trumps, uh, which were filled with Greek fire, something called Greek fire. And it was just this incredibly inflammable stuff that would set fire to the Janissaries' robes and things like this. Um, and so... The reason why they differ is they're using atmospheric oxygen. So munitions nowadays, they'll explode underwater, they'll explode high in the air where there's very little oxygen to be had um, because they contain both the fuel and the oxidizing agent and the two combine within the munition in whatever ratio the reaction does. That's where it comes down to chemistry and your mass and your moulds of, you know, is it a one to three ratio, one to two ratio? And you work it out with basic chemistry. And so they combine um, and everything is contained within the explosion to cause the chemical reaction that causes the big bang. And it causes an immediate pressure wave from that single discrete spot where it goes off from. Uh, you also get... Um, degradation explosives, I think they're called, and this is things like RDX or TNT, that as opposed to having two reactants in them, we have the fuel and the oxidising agent, they simply have one, and if you um, initiate the chemical reaction, and you get over that initial hump of the chemical reaction to start it off, it will deteriorate 
into far, far simpler compounds. So for example, these are often um, nitrogen rich compounds that can even be used as fertilizer. Um, and so they often decay down into simple atmospheric nitrogen, which is a very low energy stable molecule into, and CO2 another very stable and so if you think of it this you think of the explosive is on a very high energy level that initial um that, that initial chemical that we've put in there rdx or torx or tnt or whatever and then once we've initiated the explosion it goes down to a much 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 lower energy level it's given out all that energy into the surroundings and that's caused a deterioration reaction or something um something similar to that so it's literally the item is almost decayed to a low energy level it's similar with a radioactive decay uh the idea that why is this compound spitting out a ton of radiation it's because it wants to lower itself to an energy uh, a lower energy level where it's just much more stable much more comfortable and so that's kind of first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics so this is what things do they try and lower their energy levels and all that energy is spat out into the environment so that is what a conventional explosive does it lowers uh, to a, a lower energy and it's going to give off an immediate and very discreet blast wave and so that initial blast will obviously destroy everything within a certain radius um, how is a thermobaric weapon different this is different because it doesn't contain any oxidizing agent it relies on atmospheric oxygen so normally that's a bad idea you know if you think of your bunsen burner back in the lab what do you do to make your flame go hot and blue well you open up the little window don't you and suddenly the flame it can draw in oxygen and it gets hotter as soon as you deprive it of atmospheric oxygen by closing the window that's get, when you get the yellow flame which is much cooler and it has to lick up and try and seek out the oxygen around it and you can even run your hand through it and you won't get burned um so it seems like a bad idea but this is why it's very it's not well it's a bad idea <laughs> i guess uh, yeah in terms of a weapon it's pretty nasty is what i'm trying to say um so what they do they mix it into this shell you can say put one of these rocket launchers um various types of extremely flammable material so it could be powdered aluminium powdered magnesium it could be ethylene or propylene oxide um there's all different ones it seems that you can use and then you have you may have one you may have two small detonators in it and um, the first one will uh, rupture uh, the canister and the thing spreads out and it begins this explosion but it's not from one discrete point it ripples out and you have little pockets where the fuel hasn't ignited and it has to wait until it has enough atmospheric oxygen um that it can find and then these other little pockets of fuel will ignite so it's going to cause not one discrete immediate blast wave but a longer rippling blast wave and it's going to spread out over a much bigger area um, you can even have a secondary de detonator in it so those unburnt bits of fuel potentially then can be ignited by the secondary one and you may get a bigger explosion however and it makes a cleaner weapon because at least your explosion is fiery um because this is one of the problems that these things often don't fully burn because they've exploded some of the fuel's burnt some of it is, is not necessarily hot enough to ignite or auto ignite again it depends there are so many different varieties of these but it basically is a chemical weapon if it doesn't ignite because if you breathe this stuff into your lungs i mean do you want a lung full of powdered magnesium that's red hot or do you want a lung full of um you know ethylene oxide i don't it, it, it's gonna kill you um and so that's that's so how, how do these things work so firstly when they go off i would imagine that the blast wave is prop it's very very big it seems where you spread out and you have all these discrete sources you get a big rippling blast wave so it seems that is actually more damaging and this is why in afghanistan they were using it against cave the americans specifically were using these against caves and foxholes and things like this because you can't hide from a, a blast wave with multiple sources um you know it's like in world war one we dug our, dug our trenches with zigzags so a blast wave goes down it but if you hide in an alcove you're fine that doesn't seem to work with these weapons because they have these multiple discrete detonations it seems the blast wave comes from all angles uh, and it lasts longer however that's not the biggest killing factor with them it's not just that and it's not just the heat um it's also that once it heats up this vast area of uh, it heats up all the oxygen in that area and consumes it obviously all the gases uh, that are produced probably you know carbon dioxide and water primarily um depending on what the explosive is um 
or nitrogen, whatever, they're superheated and they're going to immediately, after that big blast, you get a vacuum or a rarefaction, as we used to call it. And that apparently is so powerful, usually, if you're within the radius of damage from these things, it'll suck the air out of your lungs and more so. It will do it so fast that your alveoli will burst. Um, this is like what happens in emphysema when you lose the elasticity of your lungs. So when you breathe out, um, you, they can't uh, recoil. And so instead, the pressure from within your thorax kind of bursts them like little balloons because they're not um, elastically recoiling and expelling the air first. And it seems this is what this weapon does, that it sucks the air out of you so fast um, that you, you, your lungs basically, basically rupture. I don't know where, if that's the alveoli, if that's your you know, pulmonary um, membrane, or, or what. I imagine it's probably the whole lot of it, quite frankly, because the, there's a reason why these things are um, you know, considered disgusting weapons. Um, have they been used yet? Um, I've seen pictures that, to me, looks like thermobaric weapons. It's a very different, it's not that quick, discreet, boom, it's a, a slower burn, and it, the colour is less hot than... Uh, a tr it's not like that really fast, quick, intense heat. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a different colour. It's sort of a more orangey-yellow kind of burn, because I, I suspect it's cooler, because it's having to look for oxygen, but it's still pretty damn hot. Um, can we be exonerated in all of this? Am I taking sides with one side or the other? No. Back in World War II, we used to have a tank known as the Crocodile, and so it was a Churchill tank chassis, and on it, though, it had mounted um, a large water pistol, for want of a better word, um, that would spray a fuel mixture, especially concocted sticky fuel mixture, um, that didn't burn too fast like petrol, didn't burn too slow that it wouldn't ignite, just, you know, nice mixture. Uh, they'd carry a big bowser behind them, and these things would trundle off into combat, and you'd see a German pillbox, and you'd go up to it, and it had a range of, it wasn't that long, it's like 60 or 70 yards, I think, but you'd spray it all over the pillbox, and then you had a second um, uh, sort of device on the front of your crocodile that would unite the lot. So if you had a really nice tank commander who felt like giving the Germans a break, he'd just spray them all with this gunk and they'd surrender and he'd accept it. But the vast majority of the time that didn't happen. That was called a wet squirt, but you didn't always do that. Um, very often, you know, you spray this stuff and a second later you're firing it and you burn everybody to death. And if you don't burn to death, you're probably asphyxiate because it's consumed all the air inside your pillbox. Um, and these are horrible weapons and there's a reason why um, in the Second World War, if the Germans, when, or when the Germans knocked out a crocodile and they caught the crew, they would shoot them out of hand because they considered this weapon to be the lowest of the low, burning people to death, even though, as I say, throughout history, every war, that has been um, an element of it. Um, so is it, is it happening at the moment? I believe the Russians have gone up to level three where they are using the cluster bombs and the thermobaric weapons because they're bogged down, as I've discussed before. I think their, um, their logistics are poor and I think they're really suffering from these very effective anti anti um, armour weapons that are being sent in, all the Milans that we send, all the javelins, far more javelins than the Americans have sent. So we watch and we wait with interest um, and we, we pray for all those innocent people because it's pretty horrible, you know, seeing a, a maternity hospital being smashed up. Um, and these were not faked videos, you know, I don't speak Ukrainian, but I believe the translation when there was this little kiddie running out saying, I'm worried about my mum, like there's also a young guy, only a few years older than him in the army, trying to hug him and saying, it's all right, it's all right. And, you know, obviously he doesn't know it's all right at all, his mum might be dead. Um, and just others come out just crying and everything, you know, because of what's happened. And it is, it is pretty, pretty horrible. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's just a quick update on thermobaric weapons.